A new year brings about possibility for a new start, new opportunities, a new identity, and that's exactly what the Tar Heels are still searching for right now. So I've got some New Year's resolutions. You are Locked On Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Monday, January 2nd, 2023. Happy New Year to everyone out there. I hope you had a great weekend. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to welcome you to the Locked On Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I want to thank you for making us your first listen or watch of the day to help you get your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Coming up on today's show, the Lady Tar Heels lost an absolute heartbreaker yesterday in Blacksburg. And of course, we've got to unpack Carolina's loss at Pitt on Friday. I've got some thoughts up front about some things that could change going forward. And then, of course, our shady stat of the game and our four corners recap. So here it is. The biggest takeaway from this Pittsburgh game, <laughs> of course, which is funny because this was the game, albeit at home, that spurred Carolina on down the stretch of last season. Last year, Carolina really turned the corner when they figured out and leaned into their roles and who everyone was. And that took some time last season, and that's part of the transfer portal era that we are in. And that is still true again this season, unfortunately. The the heels are really still working to try to figure out their roles, their identity. And until they do so, they're not going to hit their ceiling or, or even their roof as uh, it were for that matter. So I've got some New Year's resolutions, lessons learned from this pit game to start off with. There's three of them. Number one, New Year's resolution lesson learned. Don't let your foot off the gas ever, ever, ever. For for this team, you let off the gas for just a moment, particularly on the road in conference play. And this team is not good enough, at least not right now, to overcome that. Just plain and simple. You loved, I, I I loved, you probably did too, the start that they got out to on Friday at Pitt. 11-3 lead, just a couple minutes into the game, eight-point lead. They had a nine-point lead, just seven minutes into the game, and again, still had that lead with 9-15 to go. But here's the issue. We get down to the seven-minute mark of the first half. The Tar Heels are leading by eight at that point. Uh, Pitt scores to cut it to six, and then here's Carolina's next six possessions. You ready? Turnover, missed layup, turnover, 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 turnover. And then a DeMarco done three, and then another turnover. So that's actually eight possessions if we stretch it out. So Carolina had turnovers on five of six possessions that allowed Pitt to tie it at 30, and then six of eight if you stretch it out two more. So the biggest takeaway in terms of letting your foot off the gas ever, I know the Tar Heels didn't have a great second half. But had they not had this stretch in the first half, it doesn't matter what Pitt would have done because the Tar Heels would have got essentially an insurmountable first half lead. They never got it to double digits. It stayed at nine, was the highest it got in either half. But if Carolina doesn't have that stretch um, in the back half of the first half, and they probably run away with this game, just need some sort of good stretch in the second half. That's the issue to me. Yeah. The Tar Heels, yeah, they, after Pitt tied it, they pushed the lead back out to six at halftime. And, and you feel all right at that point, but you shouldn't have to feel all right. At this point, you should be able to feel fantastic because Carolina has built out some double-digit road lead against a Pitt team that has been playing pretty well this year. And if you let them feel comfortable and confident, they're going to do it. And so that's that's the issue is – Yeah, you wish you'd played better in the second half, but it's that stretch in the first half that really set the tone. That's where you have to put the game away and make hay in the first 20 minutes. The Tar Heels could have, and they didn't. 
Here's here's the other thing. When you do get into the second half, Carolina was able to build that lead back out to nine again um, with about 12 minutes left. It was an uh, Armando Baycott dunk with 11.55 left, gave them that nine-point lead. But then Pitt worked all the way back, got that lead. They hadn't led since 3-2, and they pick up another lead with 3.59 left in the game. Carolina, although it wasn't a, ever a double-digit lead, felt like they had control of this game, but again, didn't do these things they needed to do. I don't care about Jamarius Burton's 31 points or his incredible performance or Blake Hinson's seven points down the stretch. I want to know how this Tar Heels team is going to figure out who they are, their identity, their roles lean into that to fix that three minute and 30 second stretch of the first half. That's what I want to talk about. Sure, g- great second half for Pitt. Again, it shouldn't matter. And part of it is of those five turnovers, the first one was by freshman Tyler Nickel, and so you expect to see some of that down on the road. But the other four, two by Armando Baycott, one by RJ Davis, one by Pete Nance. You cannot have that from this team, uh, fr- from your veterans. Another part of the issue is that this isn't the first time this season that's happened. You should have put away Alabama. You should have put away Iowa State. And so now it's a trend and the Tar Heels have to figure out who are we. Again, it's all about figuring out identity and not letting your foot off the glass ever. Number two, New Year's resolution. Know where your bread is buttered. I think a lot of times this team knows where their bread is buttered and does it, but sometimes they get away from it. So for this one, part of why this team struggles with identity is because they often forget where that bread buttering comes from. And that is no other than Mr. Armando Baycott. I I said on Friday's show in our preview that Armando Baycott needed to feast in this game and feast. He did. It was his third straight 20 plus point game. Great job. But here's the problem. It should have been more. He should have eaten more. Um, As I said, Carolina went up nine points on that Baycott dunk in the second half. That was 11.55 left. Over those final 11 minutes and 55 seconds, Baycott only attempted three more field goals. Now, it's really encouraging to see the intentionality of getting the ball into Mondo, even reposting at times, but, but the Tar Heels seem to forget and get away from that. They've got to keep going to, if a team figures out how to stop it, great. At that point, you pass out of a double team or whatever it may be. But as long as nobody's stopping Armando, keep doing it. Keep knowing where your bread is buttered. If, if I'm coach Hubert Davis, I'm instituting some sort of Armando Baycott touches the ball at least once on every possession, or we run every possession where that doesn't happen. I mean, something to get this hammered home. All right, number three New Year's resolution for the Tar Heels coming out of this game to help with identity is just the toughness factor. It's no secret that Jeff Capel's goal is to to muddy it up against North Carolina, be the aggressor, be tougher. And for a lot of the beginning of the game, Carolina handled that well. But then they didn't down the stretch. They didn't do the things they needed to do to be tough enough to win. And now they've lost four out of the last five to the Panthers. All the more perplexing because they had just been tough enough against Ohio State. They had just been tough enough against Michigan in two very physical Big Ten games. Carolina did that. And for some reason, in this one, they did not. The season is not over. The sky is not falling. But there are things yet to be figured out as we flip the calendar into 2023. So hopefully the Tar Heels will be able to put into play some of these uh, New Year's resolutions that I am suggesting for them. Not only that, but unfortunately, this is also a lost quad one opportunity. I I know it's at Pittsburgh and you might think Pittsburgh, whatever. This team is in the top 75 in the net. And that means an away game at Pitts, a quad one opportunity. Squandered, squandered. Tar Heels are nine and five, still big opportunities in front of them, but got to get it put together as we turn the calendar to January. Okay, coming up next, you know it, you look forward to it, every game recap. It's our Four Corners recap and the shady stat of the game. And we're going to get there in just a second. 
But first, this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs, which can help you hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles you've got with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to uh, your open jobs with targeting tools. You can identify those candidates there on LinkedIn jobs and connect with them fast and importantly for free. LinkedIn jobs makes it super easy to screen and rate applicants based on your qualifications all on one platform. You want to achieve business goals here in 2023 and hiring the right team member might help you do exactly that. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the quality candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, folks, for those of you that are with us uh, all the time, you know that we do a Four Corners recap after every game as a salute, a shout out to Coach Dean Smith and his famed Four Corners offense. Well, number one in our Four Corners recap today is one of the things Carolina had to do well. I'm going to try to give us some positive since the last uh, part of our talk today was not as positive. One of the things Carolina had to do in this game well was limit the things that Pitt does well. Sometimes you come into a game and it's just like, hey, we just be us and we'll be fine. Well, this is an opportunity where I was like, hey, Carolina needs to take away some of what Pitt does well to win this game. And they did several of those things. That's one of the other head scratching aspects to this loss. Pitt comes in averaging about nine made threes a game. Carolina held them to just five on 25 attempts. That's 20% three-point shooting. Great job by the Tar Heels. You love how they're running Pitt off the line, doing things like that. Another thing, Pitt comes in as uh, averaging the most total rebounds per game in the ACC. Carolina wins the rebounding battle, 38 to 33. You love the, the three-point uh, thing. You love the rebounding thing. Um, Pitt's also a strong offensive rebounding team. Carolina held them to just seven rebounds. You love all that. Now, on the flip side of that is, is Pitt um, tends to turn the ball over quite a bit and tends to not turn the other team over quite a bit. Well, unfortunately, Carolina lost the turnover battle in this one, only forced Pitt into eight turnovers, and they themselves, the Tar Heels, committed 11. And so that side of it, you didn't limit what Pitt does well. But it is encouraging to see, hey, you can take this scouting report and do what's being asked of you. Number two in our Four Corners recap, another encouraging thing to me is now uh, Carolina in four of their last five games has had an assist percentage of 50% or higher. And if you've been dialed in, tuned in, listening to me, you know that one of my goals is for Carolina to get back up to that threshold of 50% assist rate. Uh, they, they've done it pretty consistently year after year, and they started this year woefully under that in assist percentage. But they've now, as I just said, been above 50% in four of the last five games. Um, and that season average is slowly creeping up towards 50%. Right now, it is just below that sitting at 46.8%. So really, coming back, you love to see where that is at. Next, uh, third in our, three cor in our four corners recap is the three-point shooting. Man, you know, I, I talked about knowing where your bread is buttered, and that's all about knowing, hey, we got to get the ball into Armando Baycott early and often. If people collapse on him, then you kick out and get threes and hopefully drain several of them. Well, this game showed in the two halves the dichotomy of what Carolina is as a three-point shooting team so far this season. There are some good shooters on this team. You don't have anybody that you feel like is going to be a high level 40% volume shooter from three, but you've got a lot of solid shooters, RJ and Caleb. And um, you expect that out of Tyler Nickel and Jalen Washington. Once he starts playing more, um, even Pete Nance, although not a volume shooter has shot uh, really well in his time at Northwestern. Well, in the first half of this game, Carolina shot six of 13 from deep. 
Um, they made three of those in the first seven minutes of the game. Pete Nance made two, and you're like, all right, this is going to be a good three-point shooting day. This is going to be a good Pete Nance day. And it was in the first half. Again, as I said, Carolina made six of their 13. That's over 50%. But then the second half of the game showed who Carolina has been as a three-point shooting time at other times this season, where they made just one of nine in the second half. And that one was that Caleb Love desperation three in the closing seconds. And so, yikes, that's not good. But it just shows you what the Tar Heels have been, this yin and yang all season from beyond the arc. Um, Again, I queried this question a couple weeks ago. Is it time to just recognize that this is not going to be a great three-point shooting team? And and several people said back in the comments to that, like, hey, I do believe that this is a good three-point shooting team, or at least they have good three-point shooters. Fair enough. But just because you have good three-point shooters doesn't always mean that you're a good three-point shooting team. And that's been the truth with Carolina so far. I don't think it's going to be a reliable source of offensive income, if you'll allow me to put it that way. Uh, Right now, your best two offensive attributes are getting the ball to Baycott and getting to the free throw line where Carolina is getting there over 20 times a game almost without fail, even in this game where they struggled to get to the line in the first half, they get there 21 times. Number four in our four corners reback, getting healthy. It was so good to have DeMarco Dunback, not something I think many of us thought we would say in the off season, but DeMarco Dunn comes back from injury. You thought ah, maybe uh, he'll get worked in. No, coach Davis throws him right in for sub into the game, plays the most minutes behind any of the five starters and so, man, that, that's great. Hit a three-pointer. And so for the first time this season, you feel like you have uh, a healthy team in tag. Jalen Washington, although he didn't play, is now available. I know Will Shaver's um, out right now, but he's not really been part of the rotation. So that's why I put it that way. And so Dunn looked comfortable. He looked confident, stepped right back in to the minutes he was getting before his injury. And so uh, really exciting to see that. And hopefully he can continue to progress. And maybe this can help Carolina find some of that identity and role definition that we talked about earlier. All right, let's wrap this part up by talking about the shady stat of the game. And because it's a loss, I'm going to have to talk about something negative. Carolina has lost five times this season, that four game losing streak, Iowa State, Alabama, Indiana, Virginia Tech, four game winning streak, and then this loss to Pitt. In the four most recent of those losses, Carolina has allowed 40 or more points in the paint. That has become a recurring theme in losses. Now, Carolina won the points in the paint battle against Alabama 54 to 40, um, but still allowed 40 points in the paint and have done so now on the last four losses against Iowa State. They didn't and in fact won that rebounding battle, but that is, um, you know, cropping up is something to pay attention to. And so even though Armando Baycott has been good and dominant in the lane, um, Carolina is allowing a lot of points in the lane and it's not like post-ups. It's a lot of um, driving and scoring and finishing through contact. And so I'm going to have to learn uh, how to limit that, um, whether it's um, more defensive stopping out on the perimeter um, before it gets to the, to the um, front court players or whatever it may be. That's got to change. Now you might be wondering if you watch this game, why I haven't talked about the egregious and awful Uh, offensive foul call on Leaky Black. Don't you worry, friends. There is plenty of time for that on Friday's show. And if you're a regular listener or watcher, you know exactly what I mean. What up, heel of the week? We will get there soon. But if you want to see it sooner, check out my Twitter where I have a video of it up right now. Well, uh, man, it was not just the guys this weekend suffering a disappointing loss. The ladies lost an absolute gut-wrenching heartbreaker at Virginia Tech on Sunday. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college bowl season, which is just about done, to basketball, they've got it all at betonline.net. Make sure to check out the line for Wednesday night's game against Wake Forest back in the Smith Center. 
where uh, Bet Online is always the fastest and easiest way to get your sports betting info. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Oh man, I feel awful, awful for the women's basketball team. Just heartbreak. They go to Blacksburg to play number seven, Virginia Tech, and and Carolina. Man, <laughs> the thing is that they're they're essentially heading to overtime. Virginia Tech has the ball in the closing seconds of the game, looking to get off a shot. Carolina's got some fouls to give, and so they're looking to foul Virginia Tech. Um, you know, to kind of force them to reset. But it's one of those where it's like you cannot shoot a, th- a shooter or foul a shooter, excuse me. Well, 1.8 seconds left on the clock. Carolina fouls a three-point shooter. Nonetheless, Virginia Tech hits all three. Carolina can't get a shot off on the ensuing possession ball game. Yuck, what a way to go down. But here's the thing. This was an incredible game. The the whole first half was played within four points. Neither team had more than a four-point lead. But both UNC and Virginia Tech had a four-point lead, but nothing more than that. The same is true of the fourth quarter. The whole fourth quarter was played within four points. Carolina had a four-point lead. I believe Virginia Tech's biggest in the fourth quarter was three. Great and tight game. Uh, the biggest lead of the entire game was Carolina got up by six in the third quarter. And that's part of the, the frustration I know for Coach Banghart and her team in this one is they felt like they had chances to win it and to walk away um, from Blacksburg, to walk away because they're on a two-game losing streak, which now is a three-game losing streak because of the loss. But, but you look at it, um, the two-game losing streak, you look at Carolina coming close to winning, Um, And then coming close to at least forcing overtime. And you're like, man, what a way to end a losing streak this would be. And they just can't pull it out, which is kind of confounding with a a veteran veteran team who is confident and knows what they're doing. Um, It's just, oh, man, tough, tough, tough. Now, the, the thing is, it's one of those where in some ways it feels like a good moral victory because it's like, "Eh, you know, you're expected to lose a lot of road games in conference, especially against a team ranked uh, above you in the AP poll, Carolina 13, Virginia tech seven. Um, And so to go on the road and come that close to knocking off your second top 10 team of this season and to just miss it. (sighs) Huh. It's like you you want to celebrate and lean into that. But at the same time, when you remember that, as I just said, now you've got a three game losing streak. You don't love it quite as much because it's like it, if Carolina had was on a winning streak and you lose this one, it's like, ah, shucks, almost got them, almost stole a road victory, but we just didn't. Unfortunately, it's the third of a three game losing streak. And so that makes you feel quite differently and unfortunately because the ACC is as tough as it is on the women's side this year there's no reprieve ahead and we'll talk about that in just a second but it's like you start looking at this and it's like man we are 0 and 2 in the conference now we got to start finding wins the the women as a reminder play 18 uh conference games and so they have eight more weeks of Thursday Sunday matchups that's the consistency of Carolina's ACC schedule this year which is really nice You ever wonder if they're playing? Is it a Thursday? Yep, they're playing. Is it a Saturday? Nope, they're not playing. (laughs) Is it a Sunday? Yep, they're playing. And so you can set your watch to that the rest of um, this conference season. Um, The other thing is, as we look at some of the individual performances, Deja Kelly led the way with 21, not a surprise there in any way. But one of the nice things um, that I, I wanted to point out is that Paulina Paris perhaps had her most important performance thus far as a Tar Heel. She has had some strong outings where she's done some things, but a lot of them have been against either lesser opponents or at home in Carmichael. And in this game, she showed what she's really capable of for the first time against a high-level opponent on the road. And all of that is, is an encouraging sign going forward. She tied a career high with 15 points. This was the third time this season she's hit double digits, but kind of going in line with what I just said a second ago about previous performances. The other two times she hit double figures were against Jackson state and SC upstate, neither of which are exactly 
South Carolina, as it were. Man, the South Carolina women's team is just ridiculous again. And so for Paulina to, to do this in this environment against a top 10 ACC opponent is really big time and I think allows Coach Banghart and staff to trust her even more and to continue building that depth that you want to see both in the short and long term. And also she did this, um, Paulina Paris did, on really efficient shooting. Six for nine from the field, two for four from three, and one of two from the free throw line. And so that is great. Um, and it's got to be a good feeling for her to realize how trusted she is in that type of environment. I think that probably allows her to play more freely and um, just enjoy herself more. Now, looking ahead, as I said, Carolina is 0-2 in the ACC on a three-game losing streak overall. The um, loss to Michigan in the Jumpman Invitational coming right before these first two ACC losses. The Tar Heels head to Miami on Thursday. That's never an easy thing to do. And then on Saturday, host number five, Notre Dame, whose only loss of the season is a loss by two to a ranked Maryland team. And so, um, again, there is nothing easy uh, about this conference or the stretch that the Tar Heels are going to be in. And so um, being on that three-game losing streak already, you could see how it could easily turn into four or five or beyond. And so you really just got to take this one game at a time, lock in on Miami on Thursday, and be ready to go. And no doubt Coach Bang Hart will have the team ready for that. It's going to be a great week on the show. Can't wait to kick off 2023 with you. I would love to hear your New Year's resolutions for yourself or for the Tar Heels like I shared earlier. Make sure to share those if you would. You can email the show, LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. Would always love to have more conversations with you about anything Tar Heels related, college basketball, whatever it may be. You can follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnHeels. You can follow me at Isaac shade for your next listen of the day make sure again to check out locked on sports today the biggest stories of the day plus instant reactions big game recaps and of course the take of the day it's available on the odyssey app youtube and anywhere else you get podcasts if you haven't already it'd be a great new year's present to me if you would subscribe to the show that helps us get in front of more eyeballs and ears also smash the like button that does the same thing and again leave some comments really appreciate you kicking off the new year hanging out with me i'm loving hanging out with you it is going to be a great 2023 i feel it in my fingers i feel it in my bones and yes that is a love actually uh reference right there for you wrapping up the day uh friends it's always a great day to be a tar heel isn't it even in the midst of some losing it's okay it's gonna be okay going forward all righty until tomorrow Peace.